Om San Suu Kyi was born on the 19th of June 1945 in Rambul. She's known for supporting democracy and leading the National League for Democracy in Burma. When Myanmar was controlled by the military, she was imprisoned because of her beliefs and her support for peaceful protest. For a long time, from 1989 to 2010, she was kept under house arrest. But when she was released, she became the leader of the National League for Democracy and now serves as a key leader, somewhat like a prime minister. Since 2016, she has faced criticism from around the world for not doing enough to stop the suffering of the Rohingya people in Rakhine state near Malaysia. Aung San Suu Kyi was born into a family with a deep connection to Burma's history. Her father, General Aung San, was highly respected for his role in helping Burma gain independence from British rule. Unfortunately, he was assassinated in 1947, just before Burma became independent. After her father's death, Aung San Suu Kyi's mother, Do Kahing Kyi, became Burma's ambassador to India. As a result, Aung San Suu Kyi spent much of her childhood in India, where she went to school in places like Delhi and Calcutta. India's struggle for freedom and her family's involvement in politics influenced her a lot. Later on, she went to England to study at Oxford University. There, she completed her undergraduate degree in philosophy, politics, and economics at St Hugh's College. During her time in Oxford, she met her future husband, Michael Arras, who was a smart British scholar. After finishing her studies at Oxford, Aung San Suu Kyi worked at the United Nations in New York City. In 1972, she got married to Michael Arras, and they had two sons, Alexander and Kim. During this time, her life was mainly about her family and her studies, and she wasn't yet involved in politics. However, in 1988, Aung San Suu Kyi returned to Burma to take care of her sick mother, who had a stroke. This return coincided with a period of intense political change in Burma, as people all over the country protested against the military government. Aung San Suu Kyi got more and more involved in the pro-democracy movement and became a leader. Her decision to stay in Burma and fight for democracy was a big turning point in her life. She was willing to give up her own comfort and safety to speak up for democracy, human rights, and freedom in her country, just like her father did. Aung San Suu Kyi's early life was shaped by her exposure to democratic values and her strong commitment to her family's history, which laid the foundation for her incredible journey as a pro-democracy leader in Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi's education was a crucial part of her life and her strong belief in democracy and human rights. When she was a child, she lived in different countries because of her family's work as diplomats. She spent a big part of her early years in India, where she went to school in places like Delhi and Calcutta. India was important for her because it was the land where leaders like Mahatma Gandhi were fighting for freedom and democracy without using violence. These ideas deeply influenced her and made her care a lot about justice and freedom. After finishing school in India, Aung San Suu Kyi went to study in the United Kingdom. She joined Oxford University, which is one of the best universities in the world. At Oxford, she studied subjects like philosophy, politics, and economics at St Hugh's College. Her time at Oxford helped her learn many different things, including how to think critically about important issues. While studying at Oxford, she met a British scholar named Michael Arras, and they fell in love. They got married in 1972. Michael Arras shared her passion for learning and making the world a fairer place, which would become important in her future work. After finishing her studies at Oxford, Aung San Suu Kyi worked at the United Nations in New York City. This job allowed her to learn about global issues and human rights. In summary, Aung San Suu Kyi's education was like a foundation for her. It helped her become smart and understand the importance of democracy and human rights. Her time in India, where she saw non-violent struggles for freedom, and her studies at Oxford shaped her belief in justice and freedom. Later, she used these beliefs to fight for democracy and human rights in Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi's marriage was a very important part of her life, and it played a special role in her personal and political journey. She met her future husband, Michael Arras, when she was studying at Oxford University in the United Kingdom. This meeting marked the beginning of a beautiful love story.
Michael Aris, just like Aung San Suu Kyi, was a scholar who loved learning and cared about important issues. Their shared interests and values brought them close, and they fell in love. In 1972, Aung San Suu Kyi and Michael Aris got married. Their marriage was not just about being life partners, they were also like best friends who loved learning, discussing ideas, and wanting to make the world a fairer place. But there was a challenge. Aung San Suu Kyi had to go back to Burma to take care of her sick mother, and she got deeply involved in the movement for democracy in her country. At the same time, Michael Aras stayed in the United Kingdom to focus on his studies and work. Their marriage had to endure long periods of being apart because of the difficult political situation in Burma. Aung San Suu Kyi's commitment to the fight for democracy led to her being kept under house arrest, and she couldn't communicate with her husband and children during this time. Michael Aras, however, never stopped supporting Aung San Suu Kyi. He worked hard to make the world aware of her situation and tried to get her released. He also took care of their two sons, Alexander and Kim, while she was away. Unfortunately, a sad thing happened in the late 1990s. Michael Aras got very sick with prostate cancer. The Burmese government did not allow him to visit his wife, and Aung San Suu Kyi had to make a tough choice. She decided to stay in Burma, fearing she might not be allowed back if she left. Sadly, Michael Aras passed away in 1999, and Aung San Suu Kyi couldn't be with him in his final moments. Aung San Suu Kyi's marriage to Michael Aras was a beautiful example of their love, shared values, and strong support for each other. Their bond represented their dedication to important principles like justice and freedom and their dream of making the world a better place, even when they faced many challenges and had to be apart for a long time. In 1988, when Aung San Suu Kyi came back to Burma from the United Kingdom, it became a very important moment in her life and had a big impact on her politics. Her return was not because of politics, but because her mother, Dok Hinki, was very sick after having a stroke. Aung San Suu Kyi felt a strong sense of duty and love for her family, so she came back to take care of her mother. Interestingly, Aung San Suu Kyi's return happened during a time when Burma was going through a lot of political problems. People all over the country were protesting against the government, which was led by General Ne Win and his party, the Burma Socialist Programme Party BSPP. The protests were because people were unhappy about how the government was running the country, and they wanted democracy and freedom. Aung San Suu Kyi's return to Burma coincided with the height of these protests. She was the daughter of General Aung San, who was a national hero for his role in Burma's fight for independence. Also, because she had studied at Oxford University and was known for her intelligence, she quickly became a symbol of hope for the people who wanted democracy. Aung San Suu Kyi got involved in the protests, but she always believed in peaceful ways to bring about change. She gave speeches and talked to other activists, telling them to use non-violence in their struggle against the military government. During this time, Aung San Suu Kyi helped create the National League for Democracy (NLD), a political party that wanted democracy and human rights. The NLD became very popular and strong in Burma. However, the military government didn't like the protests or Aung San Suu Kyi's involvement. In 1989, they put her under house arrest, which means she was not allowed to leave her house, and she couldn't talk to anyone outside. This went on for 15 years, with breaks in between. Even though she was isolated, Aung San Suu Kyi's peaceful fight for democracy got attention from all over the world. She won many awards, including the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. So, Aung San Suu Kyi's return to Burma in 1988 was a very important moment. It turned her from a regular person into a famous leader in the fight for democracy. Her strong belief in non-violence and democracy made her known all around the world as someone who stood up against injustice and oppression. After returning to Burma in 1988, San Suu Kyi quickly became a prominent leader in the pro-democracy movement. Her return happened during a time of political unrest and protests against the military government. San Suu Kyi's background, as the daughter of General San and her reputation as an educated and eloquent leader, made her a symbol of hope for the people of Burma who wanted democracy and freedom. She played a crucial role in creating the National League for Democracy NLD, in 1988, a political party that stood for democracy and human rights. 
Under her leadership, the NLD gained a lot of support and became a strong force in Burmese politics. San Suu Kyi believed strongly in nonviolent resistance as a way to achieve democracy. She emphasized the importance of peaceful methods inspired by leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Her speeches and messages were inspiring and motivated activists and citizens to stick to non-violence and democratic ideals. San Suu Kyi endured several periods of house arrest imposed by the military government. The first one started in 1989 and lasted for nearly six years, during which she couldn't communicate with the outside world. Even after her release in 1995, she faced restrictions and surveillance but continued to lead the NLD and advocate for democracy. In 2000, she was put under house arrest again for about 19 months after an attack on her motorcade. Following her release in 2002, she still faced limitations on her movements and political activities, along with various forms of harassment and surveillance. In May 2003, she was once more placed under house arrest, which lasted until November 2010. Her last house arrest ended just after Burma's first elections in 20 years. Throughout these times of house arrest, San Suu Kyi remained steadfast in her commitment to democracy and human rights. Her resilience and determination captured the world's attention and made her a global symbol of peaceful resistance against oppression. Her leadership, even in the face of isolation and captivity, played a crucial role in Burma's journey toward democracy. In the year 1991, San Suu Kyi received a very special award called the Nobel Peace Prize. This award was given to her because she strongly believed in peaceful ways to fight for democracy and human rights in Burma, which is now called Myanmar. It was a big recognition of her peaceful efforts and the difficult situation faced by the people of Burma. This award was like a bright light shining on her and her mission for peace. It showed the world that she was dedicated to peaceful ways of bringing about change, just like famous leaders Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Her commitment to nonviolence inspired many. Getting the Nobel Peace Prize also made her a symbol of hope for the people of Burma. They wanted democracy and freedom, and the prize showed that the world was supporting her leadership and the fight for democracy. Usually, the Nobel Peace Prize is given in a special ceremony in Norway on December 10, which is the anniversary of the founder of the Nobel Prize, Alfred Nobel. Unfortunately, San Suu Kyi couldn't be there in person because she was kept in her house in Burma. So, her husband, Michael Aris, and their sons, Alexander and Kim, went to Norway to accept the award on her behalf. Even though she couldn't be there, her husband spoke on her behalf. He talked about the importance of nonviolence, democracy, and human rights. The Nobel Peace Prize was dedicated to the people of Burma who had faced many hardships under a harsh government. This award helped people all around the world learn about her and support her. Governments, organizations, and individuals from different countries joined together to ask for her release from house arrest and to push for democracy in Burma. Receiving the Nobel Peace Prize is a very important part of San Suu Kyi's life. It shows that she is a global symbol of peaceful protest and a source of hope for the fight for democracy and human rights. San Suu Kyi was released from her last house arrest on November 13, 2010, after the first elections in 20 years took place in Burma. Her release marked her return to active politics. She thanked her supporters and promised to keep working for democracy and human rights in Burma. She also resumed leading the National League for Democracy NLD, party, which was waiting for her to re-energize its political activities. San Suu Kyi began engaging with foreign diplomats, leaders, and international organizations to discuss Burma's political situation and seek support for democratic reforms. In 2012, she ran for a seat in the Burmese parliament during by-elections and won in a big way, along with many other NLD candidates. This marked a big step forward in her political career. She became a member of parliament MP, in Burma's lower house, the Payathu Halutta, which was a historic moment for her after years of house arrest and political activism. As an MP, she advocated for democratic reforms, including reducing the military's influence and strengthening democratic institutions. In 2016, her party, the NLD, won the general elections. Although she couldn't become the president due to a constitutional rule, she became the state councillor, effectively the country's leader. 
However, her leadership faced criticism, especially regarding her handling of the Rohingya crisis in Rakhine state, where human rights abuses and displacement occurred. This issue damaged her reputation as a human rights advocate. In February 2021, a military coup took place in Burma, leading to San Suu Kyi's detention once again. This event resulted in widespread protests and the return of military rule, posing new challenges to her political journey. One of the biggest problems during San Suu Kyi's time as a leader was how she handled the situation with the Rohingya people in Rakhine state. The Rohingya are a minority group of Muslims who were treated very badly. They faced violence, were forced to leave their homes, and had their rights restricted. Many people around the world criticized San Suu Kyi because they thought she didn't do enough to stop these things from happening. Because of her response to the Rohingya crisis, San Suu Kyi lost support and respect from people in different countries. Even some Nobel Prize winners were upset with her. Some even said she shouldn't have received the Nobel Peace Prize. She also had some awards and honors taken away or criticized. In February 2021, there was a military takeover in Burma. San Suu Kyi and other political leaders were put in detention. This caused a lot of protests in Burma and people from other countries also spoke out against it. San Suu Kyi's detention made things very challenging and uncertain for her in politics. Throughout her time as a leader, San Suu Kyi faced problems because the military in Burma had a lot of power in politics. They had many seats in parliament and held important government positions. This made it hard for her to make changes and do her job properly. The laws in Burma also meant that San Suu Kyi couldn't become the president because of certain rules. Even though she became the state councillor, she didn't have all the powers of a president. San Suu Kyi's time as a leader was marked by these difficulties and controversies. The situation with the Rohingya people and the 2021 military takeover were big events that made many people around the world pay attention and have different opinions about her as a leader. San Suu Kyi's strong belief in democracy and human rights, even when she was put in her house and faced tough times, teaches us the importance of being brave and determined when things are hard. She showed us that one person's determination can inspire a whole nation and bring about positive change. She learned from great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. about solving problems without fighting. Her commitment to peaceful ways of making things better shows us that talking, discussing, and not breaking laws can lead to important changes in society and politics. Her life story tells us that it's essential to stand up for the rights and freedom of everyone, not just ourselves. San Suu Kyi didn't just fight for her freedom, she fought for the rights of everyone in her country. When she decided to go back to Burma and lead the pro-democracy movement, even though it was risky for her, she taught us about the sacrifices that leaders sometimes make for the greater good. She showed us that putting the future of our nation before our personal comfort is a powerful example. Her story reminds us that problems about rights and freedom aren't just local issues, they are global. People from all around the world supported her, showing us that fairness and freedom are important for everyone, no matter where they live. San Suu Kyi's leadership journey also teaches us that leadership can be complicated. Even though she was celebrated for her work, she faced criticism and challenges when she was in power. Being a leader means making tough choices. Her life story also tells us that we should be adaptable and strong when things change. Even when things didn't go as planned, she learned to adjust and face challenges. In simple words, her story reminds us that the fight for democracy and human rights never really ends. Even when things seem very hard, people and groups can keep going and eventually achieve their goals. San Suu Kyi's life is an inspiration for all of us to stand up for what is right and work towards a fair and just world, no matter how tough it gets.